Okay, I guess we can start. Uh, good morning po to everyone. Again, maraming maraming salamat po ulit sa pagsama sa amin sa aming second uh, webinar. So, in the past few weeks, we have launched uh, our webinar, our forum, and our web lecture. So, two weeks ago, we have the lecture on rising above, above learning inertia. So, meron po tayong mga uh, na-discuss about uh, learning techniques that we can use well in this crisis. And yung forum po natin na uh, readiness of K-12 graduates as they enter university. So we also have that with UPLB professors. And of course, yung pong lecture ng ating uh, founder and CEO of the page ng Filipino Science Hub, yung Atomic Theory. So for today, we are offering you the second webinar uh, of the Filipino Science Hub. Uh, but before that, as uh, next slide, please, Kuya JP. Uh, let just let me just give you some webinar pointers or reminders, or parang house rules po natin habang nanonood nitong webinar. So kindly mute your device's microphone and keep your cameras turned off. Reserve questions toward the end of the presentation. So, pwede nyo pong ilagay yan sa Zoom chat box or if you're watching through YouTube, pwede nyo rin pong i-comment sa YouTube. And if you are willing to go live, pwede nyo pong erase yung hand nyo after the presentation and we will call you. And uh, we will give you the, uh, the, the stage para magkaroon po ng chance na makapagtanong live with our speaker. And also, please... Uh, do not record the session via your personal devices. Next slide, please. So after the presentation, we will have a 30-minute uh, question and answer. And certificates will be issued to Zoom and YouTube participants who are Phil Sci-Hub followers. The Google form link will be posted on Zoom chat box and YouTube live comment section. And your certificates will be posted on the page. So you need to follow our page, the Phil Sci Hub page or the YouTube channel. And slides will not be shared, but the web lecture video will be uploaded on YouTube and Facebook as well. So after this presentation, we will make some edits and upload it both on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Next slide, please. All right. So just to give you some uh, background about our group and our page, I will give the mic to, and also about this webinar, I will give the mic to uh, our CEO and founder, Sir Jeffrey Bunkin. We have Jeff. Okay. Um, salamat, Marty. Um, magandang gabi po. Um, nakikita niyo ako, Marty? Okay. Can you see me? Yes, yes. Okay. So, maganda gabi po sa inyo lahat. So, muli po. Ako po si Jeffrey Bunkin. Ako po ang founder ng Filipino Science Hub. So, una po sa lahat, welcome po sa ating session ngayon. Um, pangalawa po, uh, magpapasalamat po kami sa suporta po ninyo at sa inyo pong willingness talaga to improve upon your peer craft. So, kami po ay sobrang overwhelmed sa uh, response na nakukuha po namin sa inyo. Lalo't higit po nakakatawa na makitang talagang eager po kayo na Matuto pa po at ma, 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 maka um, acquire ng new skill set and competencies to respond to the new normal. So, um, muli po magpapakalala po ako, ipapakalala ko po ang page. So, a Filipino Science Hub, so Filipino Science Hub page po, it's uh, an online platform that um, we um, started back in 2012 um, with the hopes of promoting the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics culture among Filipinos uh, teachers in, and students um, um, in the high school level. So, muli po, kami po ay hindi accredited ng kahit na anong government agency. Hindi rin po kami for profit. Um, kami po ay grupo po ng mga volunteers na nagsuspend po ng mga oras namin sa labas ng aming mga trabaho para po makapaglingkod po sa inyo. So, 
I would just like to 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 also mention na bukod po sa kami nagpapasalamat po sa inyo sa inyong suporta, ah, gusto ko rin po sanang hingin ang inyong pangunawa. Minsan po meron po kayong uh, mga tanong sa, sa through messages or comments na kung sakali po hindi agad namin masagot, that is because nagtatrabaho po kami. May full-time jobs po kami. And then pangalawa po, There are certain contents that we will deliver, for example, tutorials and lectures po to address yung gaps dun sa uh, grasp ninyo sa subject matter. So, may mga certain lectures po na hindi po kami magbibigay ng certificates, ano po, kasi po, minsan po overwhelming po yung number ng registrants. Sometimes we do have like 5,000 to 6,000 people reg uh, registering for, for some of our contents and given na... Uh, Well, ano wala po talaga kami sinusweldohan na empleyado dito. Minsan po, we can't keep up with the numbers. But we're trying our best. And this time po, we're gonna try something new para lahat po kayo mabigyan ng certificate of attendance if that is uh, something that would really help you in in justifying how you use your time um, during uh, the, the lockdowns. So yun po, hindi ko po mapatagalin. Um, ito pong ating content ngayon, we're very privileged to have um, um, a very seasoned educator uh, na naabutan ko po nung ako po nasa UPLB pa. But I will not preempt the introduction. Um, sana po ma-enjoy po ninyo itong seminar na ito, ang webinar na ito. At sana po ay marami po, po tayong baunin pabalik po sa ating mga silid-aralan. Um, yun lang po. Maraming maraming salamat po ulit. At yun po, uh, Marty, yun ulit. Ayan, uh, thank you Kuya Jeff uh, para sa maikli but meaningful na introduction of our page and of course uh, the seminar that we will be holding for today. So uh, for today, next slide please. Okay, so for today we will be having our webinar number two and the topic will be the five Ease of teaching, developing a more efficient, effective, engaging, entertaining, and enjoyable way of teaching. So our uh, speaker for today is Professor Elmer Rico E. Mojica. Our speaker is a native of Sambanga City where he finished his primary and second, secondary education and was class valedictorian. He obtained his BS and MS Agricultural Chemistry degree at University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and his PhD in Chemistry at Universal, uh, University of Buffalo in New York City, uh, New York. He also got a postdoc at the City University, New York, at York College. And today, he is currently a lecturer and an, an associate professor at the Department of Chemistry and Physical Sciences of Pace University, also in New York. He previously taught at the Cavite State University and UPLB in the Philippines and was adjunct professor at different colleges in New York. Dr. Mojica specializes in analytical chemistry with expertise in application of chromatography, spectroscopy, and electrochemistry in different fields like food science, nutrition, biochemistry, and environmental science. He had written over 70 publications, which includes articles and book chapters in peer-reviewed journals and books, and obtained grants from uh, various organizations, including the National Scientific Foundation. Uh, Dr. Mojica is also a recipient of various awards, including UPLB College of Arts and Sciences Outstanding Junior Faculty, Outstanding Teaching Assistant from the Department of Chemistry and Graduate School while at University of Buffalo. He also received the first Excellence in Research and Scholarship Award during uh, the Pace University Research Day. He was also a recipient of Ulirang Guru Award uh, College Level in 2019, sponsored by the Association of, of Phil-Am Teachers of American or AFTA and 2020 Charles and Homer Pace Teaching Award. And while he's giving his lectures, I, I, I'm sure he will also give some background uh, about uh, his advocacy and his uh, passion in teaching. So let me now give the floor to Professor Elmer. Yeah. I want to share. <laughs> Okay, so 
Uh, magandang araw sa inyo dyan sa Pilipinas. It's evening here from uh, what we call used to be the center of the universe and the epicenter of COVID. At least hindi na po ngayon. So what I'm going to, to do uh, today is I'm going to share to you experiences that I have uh, uh, what we could garner during the teaching career that I have. I think this is what my 22nd year of teaching. So uh, I, I put it like a uh, five E's of teaching. Okay. So this is not the one that is the five B and the seven E that was advocated by education before. Okay, this is just based on my, uh, what we call experience. So you might ask Pace University, where, where is this Pace uh, University? Okay, so Pace University is a private uh, university based here in New York City. We have uh, two campuses, it was uh, three before, but we have to sell uh, one of the campus where the College of Law is uh, what we call the uh, house. So I'm based here in New York City, although when I was new in Pace University, I go to Westchester to teach some courses, okay? And uh, Pace University, if you go to New York City, you, you stand on what we call the Brooklyn Bridge. This is what you're going to see, okay? So this is, we could say, the, 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 the site, if you're standing in, uh, Brooklyn Bridge. The right side, you have the city hall. The left side, you have the seaport. Okay. So, Pace University is that uh, building that dwarfed by this uh, spiral building called the Gallery Building. Okay. And I like to share to you the institution where I work. So, as Marty uh, said in the introduction, I finished my BS and MS in the uh, UP Los Baños, and then I, I, I have my uh, first teaching career in Cavite State University way back in 98. After a year, uh, Institute of Chemistry asked me to go back and teach there. And while I'm teaching there, I finish my MS, okay? And uh, what we call promoted from instructor to assistant professor in 2005, I packed my bag, okay? And took my PhD at UB. And then 2010, uh, we have this crisis that we have here. NYU originally offered me, but they rescinded it because of some immigration problem. Okay, but what happened is I end up teaching in this uh, several institution until I become full time in uh, Pace University. Okay, so these are the different institution that. I have, and just an evidence to show you that I, I really went here, okay? So I like to show you the IDs that I have. Uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, uh, uh, Jeff, pwede niyo ba ano tanggalin tong na ano sa atin? <laughs> yeah, um... Some of the portion here. I think you, they cannot see the whole. Uh, yeah, Kuya, I think it's okay now. I can see it um, completely from my end. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Oh, it's okay now. It's okay now. Okay. Yeah. So these are the different IDs that I have. So parang souvenir collection ko na lang to eh. Okay. Now, all of us, I think most of you participants, uh, all of you are what we call teachers. And to tell you frankly, it's never been in my uh, dream that I end up as a teacher one day, but I was just forced, I think way back in 98, uh, trying to find job. And then I cannot find any job. And I was uh, staying with my dad in uh, Kabite and then said, why don't you teach in this university? And then I said, I try, okay? So we all know teaching is just the action of a person who teaches the profession of a teacher. And the way that we do teaching is we, we try to, uh, to impart knowledge or skill a process that facilitates learning, okay? And when we teach, there's a specialized application of knowledge, skill, attributes, design to provide unique services, okay? To the, uh, what we call needs of the individual or society, okay? So they said teaching is what? 
uh, the noblest profession. Okay, so although I said I end up teaching by accident, or I end up as an educator by accident, usually what I do when I'm giving a task, I try to give 100% effort or more in the task. Okay, so through the years, siguro na, na, na ano na rin ako sa pagtuturo, sabi ko siguro ito talaga yung tadhana na, na mag magturo. Okay, so during my teaching experience, uh, we could say chemistry is not really a, an easy course. It's one of the hard course that we have. Okay, and it's regarded as top science by both young and adult learner, not only there in the Philippines, but also here in the United States. Okay. And we always ask, why chem? And we always said from one professor, he said, I teach chem because chem is what we call the central science. All other allied fields are one way or another related to what we call chemistry. Okay? And the way I try to what we call impart this teaching of chemistry, siguro, I just play around with the words that I have in it. In, in chemistry, okay? So I would just say community, health, environment, medicine, industry, sciences, teaching, research, and most especially you, okay? I, I don't think if you have, uh, you, you can find other uh, what we call subject or course wherein if you take it away, your day will not be complete. I, I don't think if you're ready to live in a society where chemistry is not uh, what we call present. So before we start, the, the main lecture, uh, ito lang ano ko ha, pwede naman matulog eh. I always show this uh, slide to my students. Okay? So okay lang matulog, naka-record naman daw eh. That's, that's the new way that we have here in our school. Okay? When we deliver the online learning, okay, most of the students, I always caught them sleeping. Because tapos na yung lecture, naka-sign naka in pa rin sila when, when I told them to go out. Okay? It means they just there to show that they're present. Pero hindi naman sila nakikinig. So, five E's. Okay? So, the first thing that I'm going to do is why letter E? Obviously, siguro sa name ko, Elmer, di ba? Okay? But if you're going to look at this, uh, this slide that I have shown you, that in the yung five is nothing. I would say five is here. This is the five essential. If uh, essential thing that you need to have if you end up in teaching. This is just based on my what we call experience. Okay, and what do we have here? What are these five E's? Expertise. I'm going to go on them one by one. Okay? So, expertise, when we say expertise, this is knowledge, a skill in a specialized field. Efficient or efficiency, well organized in terms of teaching. Effective, we could say successful in producing uh, unintended results. Engaging. Drawing favorable attention and entertaining, which is providing amusement. So in this time of pandemic, who are you going to rely on? Sino mga expert? Okay? Siya ba? Yung unang dalawa ba? O yung huli? Okay? Maybe you will say, oh, not the, not, not, not the first two. Okay? But you don't know the third one. But you will bet that I think I'm going to believe the third one. Dahil may uh, white lab coach siya. Okay? So you know the first two. They're popular. But in terms of pandemic, they're not expert. Okay? But the third one, even you don't know, that's Dr. X. Elsa Salvania. Okay? She's, we could say, the counterpart of our expert here in the U.S., which is Dr. Anthony Pochi. Okay? So, ganun din tayo sa pagtuturo. Okay? Maybe the, be uh, the question I'd like to ask you is, why are you hired in the first place? Why are you hired as, as a teacher in the first place? Is it because of your qualification? Or is it because of your connection? Or it because it is both? Okay? 
You know, in the Philippines, what I learned when I was there, it's not what you know. It's usually who you know. And I'm not sure if it's still true until now. Okay? Now, why do we need expertise? In one regional STEM forum there in uh, Thailand last year, okay, uh, Isabel Victorino, Chief Education Program Specialist, presented in slide and the perceived obstacles towards STEM integration, we could say number one, there's lack of qualified faculty. Hindi ba ibig sabihin nun, kulang tayo ng faculty na may expertise. Okay? That's why uh, through this program that Jeff is implementing is at least we want to share one way or another to uplift the conditions that we have there. Sino sino ba naman magtutulungan kung di tayo mga uh, magkababayan. Now, why did I say expertise is needed? Okay? Most of us are what we call teaching STEM. Okay? And if you teach STEM, most subject deals with abstract concept. So pag sinabi mong abstract, ang hirap ituro kasi hindi mo nakikita. You have to use your imagination or you have to let your students imagine the topic or the concept that you want to teach them, okay? Most subjects involve analysis and calculation, often involving numbers. And it's difficult for many students deficient in math and statistics. I don't know. Even here in the US, we have problems with math. Even in chemistry, most of the students fail the course because of their math. The way I try them to do, think of the number as money, okay? So just to at least reduce the anxiety that they have with mathematics. Now, another thing that we need to know is there's no more standalone subject at this time. Most of them are what we call interfaces with other fields. Most of the courses that we have now are interdisciplinary. And it's a challenge for the students to be able to integrate or involve with higher what we call cognitive skills. Okay, so what do we need to do? Okay, we need the expertise because we must first be equipped with the knowledge that we teach. We must then be able to translate difficult concepts into understandable concepts. Okay? So if we're going to look at this, usually the way I teach, I think I was influenced by this guy. Okay? So... Unfortunately, this picture is also the one that makes, we could say, science conscious. If you are presented with this picture of an old person, I think everyone will be turned off. But what if we present him as this young, gorgeous, uh, gorgeous person? Okay? Pag naiisip ko to, naiisip ko yung history teacher namin sa UPLB, eh, si Clea, Sir Climax, na naging teacher ko. Okay? But Einstein explained it. If you can explain it simply you don't understand it well enough. And the thing is, if you're not an expert, okay, most likely you're going to have a hard time explaining it. Although we say, oh, Google is available. Yes, you can mimic, you can imitate what they said there. But if you are hard, uh, uh, being asked by hard questions, okay, if you don't have that specialty or expertise, mahirap sagutin yung mga tanong na yun. Ang, 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 ang hirap natin sa ngayon dito, nabasa lang sa Google, kala natin authority na eh. Okay? And the, and the sad part here, most of the scientists, they are not the one that, that, that's going to, to brag about them. So most of them are the silent one. Okay? The problem right now, the one that are what we call outspoken, there are those stupid people, the idiotic people, because they have some interests of their own. Okay? Mahirap ngayon eh, Mahirap i uh, what we call, kung meron silang naglabas na, let's say, video, mahirap i-explain na mali yung video nila. Pero yung iba na walang expertise, nakikinig agad sa kanila. Okay? And Einstein also said it, you have to limit the simplification. You cannot oversimplify. Everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. Okay? My uh, one of the advisors that we have, I have here in the U.S. In everything that you explain, <laughs> you always follow kiss. Keep it simple. 
student. Okay? So, that's what to say, the influence here. So, when I get that, uh, what we could experience, okay? So, the, the way that I try to teach everything right now is just like this one. How do we simplify them? If we're going to present students fruits like this one, okay? Hindi, hindi attractive sa kanila yan. Hindi nila kakainin. But if you want to what we call do it in this way, like a fruit salad ready to eat, I think it will be more acceptable. But that's the, that's the challenge that you have here. And I think being an expert is the one that will help you convert a complex concept into a simpler one. Okay? So dyan sasabihin yung talaga yung pangangailangan ng expertise. Now, what's the next key? The essential E that we have. So, teach thought uh, put out these 10 indicators last year. But this year, they updated it. Okay? They updated it to uh, what we called 16. Okay? And if you're going to look at this one here, most of them, they said, indicates that you are an efficient teacher. But la later on, I'm going to tell you about this efficiency thing. Okay? So if you're going to look at this, all of them pertains to one thing. You make frequent small adjustment. So what does it mean? You're open to change. You think in design terms. You plan backward. I think this is one thing that I have learned when I have my online teaching training uh, this summer, okay? They said the best way for you to plan an online teaching is you plan with the end. What do you mean plan with the end? So you're, you're, you're talking about backward design. What do you want your students to earn or to learn by the end of the session? And what you're going to do is you do the activities, you create the activities until you meet the thing, okay? You always have, we could say, learning feedback. You change your mind because I thought, I would say the only thing that is permanent in the world is change. You have knowledge on how uh, your students do in your class. Okay? You are open that students can change as times go on. Hindi sila forever na mahina. There will come a time that they will bloom. Okay? and become somebody as, as, as I experienced firsthand. Okay, so these are the first 10. The last six that they have here is this one here. Now, the sad part here is, I, I, I don't think this applies to all of us. I've seen Filipino teachers uh, always stressed out by the end of the day, okay? I'm not the only teacher in the house. My wife is also a teacher there in the Philippines and now here in New York City. And I could see that she's more stressed out uh, than me every day. She's a special education teacher here in uh, New York City. Okay? And when we talk about this, what we call effective teacher. So in the book, way back in 1971, by Hildebrand, Wilson, and Deans, uh, Evaluating University Teaching, they list down uh, this, uh, we could say, traits or characteristic of an effective teacher, okay? In terms of, uh, they are organized and have clarity, so they explain well or they explain clearly. They have the capacity to make difficult topics easy to understand, okay? They use examples, details, analogy, metaphors, and a variety of modes in explaining uh, some stuff to make the material not only understandable, but also memorable. When you say analytic and synthetic approach, that means they have a thorough command of the field. They are expert. Okay? They contrast the uh, implications of the different theories okay? in a given uh, what we call problem. They give the, st the students the sense of the field, its past, present, and future direction, the origins of a given idea and concept. And then effective teacher, we could say they have this dy uh, dynamic, uh, being dynamic and being enthusiastic, 
they are energetic, a dynamic person. They enjoy teaching. Okay? In terms of instructor group interaction, they can stimulate direct and pace interaction with the class. They encourage independent thoughts and accept criticism. I think that's that's the hard part, especially sa traditional teaching kyan. Para kasi tingin natin sa teacher, sila lang yung tama. Okay? O sila na yung magaling. Okay? And then, in terms of instructor group, uh, uh, instructor individual uh, interaction, uh, usually teachers perceive, especially in his uh, way of method of evaluation, you expect to be fair. There's no, there should be no favoritism or biases. Okay? And students should see you as being approachable and a good, valuable source of advice. Okay? Now, if we're going to look at the two, hindi ba magkatulad tong efficiency tsaka effectiveness? Okay? So if you're going to look at the difference of this, uh, what we call efficiency and effectiveness, so Peter Drucker, an Austrian-born American uh, economist, sum it as this one, the difference between uh, what we call efficiency and effectiveness. Okay? Efficiency means doing the right things, right? While effectiveness is doing the right things. Okay? So, you can be an efficient teacher. You run smooth classroom without wasted time. They finish all their lessons and return graded work in a timely manner. But you cannot be an effective one if the students didn't learn anything. From you. And an effective teacher, he can do everything here, what an efficient teacher do. And the additional point there is he can get results. Parang uh, i-compare natin, let's say, sa car. Okay? Car is what? An effective means of transportation. Now, if you're going to determine, is that car efficient? So you have to look at the efficiency of the car in terms of the fuel that it consumes. So ganun yun, parang what we call difference ng efficiency and effectiveness. And for me, I think if you want to be a good teacher, you should have possess both uh, uh, efficiency and effectiveness. And another way to look at this, what we call effectiveness, the students feel the effect. Efficiency, walang effect to the student. Yan. Okay? So usually we could say the approach of efficiency is more introvert compared to effectiveness where the approach is extrovert. And effectiveness would have a uh, long-term effect compared to efficiency. Okay? Uh, Pearson Ed survey students uh, aged from 15 to 19 years old, and they list down the top five qualities of effective teachers. Okay? So wh wh what are these qualities that they, 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 they listed here? The ability to develop relationship with their students. Okay? They said great teachers develop relationship with the students. And literature agree with this statement. Teachers, you need to build strong or you need to build trusting relationship with the students in order to create a safe, uh, positive, and productive learning environment. You're expected to be what? Patient, caring, and kind personality. I remember this week, a colleague of mine, we have our stu uh, uh, semestral student evaluation. Early in the morning, uh, I, I receive a text, oh, I should not have read my evaluation. It ruined my day. And then I reply, I'm not going to read it today, some other day. <laughs> okay? Because wh what they see here is the personality characteristics it's related to being a compassionate person, especially in this time of the pandemic. All administrators told us to uh, what we call practice empathy. Okay? Because some students might undergo some problem, crisis that can affect his, his or her study. Okay? So you need to be what we call sensitive to the needs of the students. And I think one of the main problem 
that we have with the students is their mental problem right now. They don't have the grit. It's not only uh, there in the Philippines, but also here in the US. Parang konting ano lang, magtatampi na sila. Okay? So another thing that they want, the students want is the knowledge of the learner. They want their teachers to know okay, the ability of a learner or the ability of each student. The teacher should understand the pace and capacity of the student. Okay? Number five, we can say is dedication to teaching. So when you say dedication refers to the love of teaching or passion for the work. And this includes commitment to student success. The rule that I have, okay, I'm only successful if my students are successful also. That's, that's, that's the way I, uh, what we call, uh, emphasize, okay? The success of myself base is based on the success of my students. If they're successful, I can say I'm also successful. And usually the, stu uh, the students uh, know if a given teacher is dedicated or not in their job, okay? And the last one that we have here is engaging students in learning. And we're going to talk about engaging in the next uh, uh, several slides, okay? So students are more motivated to succeed not only in class, but also in their life if they have effective teacher, if the teachers allow them to engage, okay? Because we're going to talk about uh, what is this engagement thing that I have here in the slide. But before I go here, maybe I just try to do some uh, David Letterman top 10. Uh, here we could say, top 10 worst mistakes. And I got this in one of the seminars for, for us because to tell you frankly, I was not uh, uh, trained as a teacher. I was trained as a scientist. So this was from Fel, uh, Felder and Brent. Uh, uh, they are from Education Design and they list down the top 10 uh, worst mistakes if you are what we call a teacher okay so we will go on them one by one when you ask a question in class immediately you call for volunteers what happens when you do this you're not creating a good atmosphere i remember when i have student when somebody say that sir i volunteer pedro okay i volunteer another classmates of mine okay but there's still worse than that, okay? What's worse than that? When you do this so-called cold calling, okay? So cold calling is you call a student, ask him a question, and don't give him time to answer the question. May term ata yan sa atin sa Pilipinas eh. Pinagtritripan nyo yung studyante. Okay? That's not a good one. Turn classes into PowerPoint shows. I hate PowerPoints. As much as possible, I want to be like an animated one when I do my lecture. That's why it's really hard when we shift to remote learning because everything is in the PowerPoint. But I still try to engage them by using this part. Okay? So I try to answer them there that just like we're writing, just like we're in the Blackboard. Because if you turn the classes into a PowerPoint class, what will happen? It becomes so monotonous. Even I, when I was there in the Philippines, I hate it when the presenters flash his slide or her slide, and then he will read everything that was put there. Okay? Meron ka pa tayong ganyan? I don't know. Fail to provide variety in instruction. I have a teacher, I think, in the college. She just sit down here the whole day with a pack of cigarette and then talk about the course. But yun lang, hindi mo lang siya nagsusulat sa board. Okay? I don't like that. Because you don't uh, show different variety in instruction. Have students work in groups with no individual accountability. So what happens if you have group work? The dominating one will be the one to finish it. Okay? 
And how do they feel? They did a lot, but the grades that they get for each of the members of the group are the same. Help to establish relevance. So as much as possible, when I do my lecture, I try to put connection. Because here in the US, they always tell you, this doesn't make sense. But if you explain it to them, at the end, they will say, now that makes sense. That's what I learned here in the US. Okay? You have to tell your students that what they're studying makes sense. And this one, I know someone in the mathematics doing this, or maybe this is a message to what? Engineering faculty? The one to SAWA exam? Don't do that. Okay? Maybe I could say the mistakes that I have here, I cannot use this in UP. Because I did these mistakes when I was teaching in UP. Okay? Get stuck in the rut. So what does this mean? The materials that you have is the same materials when you start teaching. I tell you, the one that I'm presenting right now, I presented it in a school there, but it's different from the one that I presented. And in every presentation that I have, although they have the same title, but I can tell you the contents are not the same because I have to update myself to become relevant. I don't want to get stuck in a rut. Okay? Number two, teaching without clear learning objective. Sometimes I say, why are we here? What's the relevance of this course? I have a, uh, we could say a course when I was in college, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, the professor didn't come Monday and Wednesday and the class is five to six. So what do you expect? We don't show up on Friday, but what happened? He showed up on Friday. And the question that he had is, number nine, Rizal was electrocuted, true or false? Number 10, Bonifacio pushed the button. What the hell is that thing? But we have a teacher like that. I experience it. The thing that I did is, when I was a teacher, I said, I'm not going to make the same mistakes that this teacher got. Because when I was a teacher, the main thing that I tried to do is I tried to put my shoes in the shoes of my students. Maybe that's the way I got to love this course because I always get complained when the teachers are the loudy thing. Ang hirap ko mga nila eh. Because I'm thinking is, hey, I am na kasi iniisip nila, ganun kakagaling kagaya nila. Okay? But I'm not allowed. I'm an ordinary student. We sometimes get drunk a night before your the exam because I enjoyed college. Okay? But the last thing that we have here, and I think, I don't know if this is still practiced there in the Philippines, disrespecting students. Okay? Once you do that, I think the environment will be affected. And what happened here is hindi mo na makukuha yung respect that you want from your uh, what we call student. Okay, If you give students a sense that you don't respect them, the class will probably be a bad experience for everyone, no matter else what you, no matter what else you do. But if you convey respect and caring, it will cover a multitude of the pedagogical sins that you might commit. So kahit nagkakamali ka, pero nire-respeto mo nila, okay, walang problema. Ma-accept ma 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 nila yung shortcomings mo. Okay? We have teachers like that. That's why when I said, if I'm going to be in the teaching profession, I'm not going to be like those professors that I have. Okay? But during that time, wala eh. Accept lang tayo ng accept, di ba? Hindi tayo pwede mag, uh, what we call, reklamo sa Twitter. Oh, ang professor namin, walang alam, parang ganun. Okay? So that we could say is the top 10 worst mistake. I, I just tried to do it because it guided me when uh, I, I embraced the teaching profession, especially here in the U.S. Okay? Now, we go with this so-called engagement or engaging so we can define engagement as uh, complete absorption and involvement with the content 
and the instruction. Now, engagement is not synonym for entertainment. Okay, engagement, we could say it's a necessary first step for learning. And for me, that's the connection that you establish to your student. So one person, one writer by the name of John Warner said, engagement means setting up challenges for students that are meaning, uh, meaningful beyond getting a great. And what are these challenges? So these challenges would encourage risk without unduly punishing failure so they may experience the pleasure of resiliency and be enthused about trying again. I don't know, some people right now, parang hindi na sila na train sa failure eh. But I think, I think uh, the failures that I have in my career, that's the one that make me, we could say, successful. Because you learn from the failures that you've had. And the students should learn that. Okay? But the thing is, wag naman natin i-fanish pag nagkaano sila, hindi nila na-meet yung expectation. Because you have to challenge them. Okay? So you have to engage them. Okay? So the way that you want to do is, you want to transform your classroom from this boring, passive learning thing into this one. So... The way the, the David Wenger said 1992, active learning exercises help uh, students to know each other, which transform passive learning into active participants during the transmission of information in classroom. Traditional teaching is passive learning. The center of the information is the teacher. Okay, But in the active learning, it's different. You try to facilitate the learning experience, okay? So if you're going to look at how the general scheme, uh, scheme of this passive learner, if we follow it, this from the name of the band, is one direction, the world, the passive learner, and then the classifier. But if you have an active learner, you can see that there's a reversible reactions at chemistry, okay? There's an interaction. There's a response and query, query and response between the learner and the world. Or the way that we're going to look at it is the learning pyramid. We try to focus more on stuff that we generally remember. And usually that's the base here. Because those, ba those base here, as you go down the base, people generally remember. 10% of what they read, 20% of what they see, 30% of what they see or hear here, here and 50% of what they hear and uh, what they can see. But if you ask them to analyze, define, create, and evaluate, there's 70% of what they say and write and 90% of what they do. This is just based on this saying. I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. And this is by from whom? Confucius, okay? So we could say that's the basis of this so-called passive, uh, active learning. Now, if we're going to look at this type of engagement, we could say there are four principles that we have here. Emotions, performance, community, and stories. What is these emotions? So they study the cognitive resources of every person and they found out they're limited. You can only absorb, okay, enough, but not too much knowledge. But if you're going to use emotion, it can enhance the engagement. For instance, we can engage our emotions with one part intimidation. Mahirap ang Camp 40, mahirap ang mat, okay? And then one part inspiration. Oh, kahit mahirap, maraming pumapasa. So you're engaging them and you're using like an emotion because people has emotion, right? Now, the second principle we could say performance. I think this has something to do with your persona. Performance really matter whether you like it or not, okay? You must have a characteristic and we could say passionate uh, uh, way of 
tech teaching. Okay? You put a lot of thought into your classroom teaching and you can probably employ you more. Number three, community. I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this sitcom. I have to watch it when I was teaching here because I have to understand the culture. Community is about the group of students in the community college. They try to build a community through these so-called study groups. Okay. Now, if you want to engage them, you have to make sure that there's a way for you to entice them to build some sort of a relationship that they can play a role in the group and that role that they have is important for them to be engaged or kept engaged in the lesson that they have. And the last but not the least is stories. Stories are most nature, natural form of thought. So what do I do here? I just tell stories about my experience in research. I usually do this with my research students. Oh, we have this, what we call accident, some sort of that thing. And I find that it's really what we call useful, okay? The next slide that I have here says uh, different engaging strat strategies found on this website. Get students interested, okay? You should always kick things up in a memorable way. I don't know if you still start your lesson class, a lesson for today is about, okay? Yes, when I was new, I was like that, but usually right now, no. I try to catch their interest right now, okay? I usually also discuss current events. So I always try to relate this pandemic thing that we have in the lessons or topics or concepts that we discuss. We allow the students to take ownership of their learning. So I usually do this for those who do research. I give them an options, what topic they want to work. And usually if, they, if they're the one who choose them, there's a lot of interest or I got a lot of results from that. Let students assume various roles in the classroom. So just like the community. So they feel they are what we call important if they have a role to play, okay? take advantage of the technology that we have, have little fun. And the important that we have here is the teacher-student engagement. So what are you passionate about? Try to show them, I, tell them, I like movies, I like Star Wars, okay? I like science picture and stranger things. So I will try to do, tell them this is my interest, if that interest them, there's already an engagement on this. And the last thing essential that I have, which I learned here is being entertaining. When I was applying for a job in 2010, there's always says, must possess a sense of humor, okay? So possessing and exhibiting a good sense of humor is one characteristic of excellent teacher. Usually it's a formal method, such as humor that can produce sustained interest and deep learning in students and there are studies that show okay, the benefits of humor. There's an increase in learning, self motivation, class attendance, test performance, divergent thinking, interest in learning. And the good thing that we have here is reduction of anxiety and stress, especially is in 10 courses. Okay? The creation of a positive social and emotional learning environment. And there's a creation of a common uh, psychological bond between the students and uh, we could say the teacher, okay? Now, you have to be careful because not all humor are good, okay? And these are some bad humor categories. Okay, so if you're going to look at this, uh, what we call, there are some instances you try to be funny, but what happened is the joke that you gave is not working. Failed attempts at you more, 
Okay. Failure to understand the student level of understanding of the information being taught. So you're given the math jokes and the students are not even math majors. Offensive, rude, or sarcastic humor, that's a big no-no. The trying too hard to be funny. Jokes about particular students. And then humor that is unrelated to the subject matter of the class. So maybe you're trying to talk about uh, uh, humor about a sitcom that was what we called uh, years ago. Try to use John Pruntong of John and Marsha. If you want, I don't know if you know that uh, what we call show. You laugh at your own jokes and then humor that the press. Okay, so you have to make sure that the humor that you're going to be deliver will have a click. Okay. And I think uh, I try to what we call do that. I have to do that because I was given a once a week class that start at 5.30 to 8.30 in the evening, okay? So I have to find ways to at least keep the class a week for the three hours, okay? So I already gave you the five essentials of teaching and it can be improved by adding two more E's. Experience. Experience, we could say, refine the things that I have. And the fourth uh, and the last one that I have is I try to make it enjoyable. Okay. If you don't enjoy teaching, don't teach. Okay. Because for the F and the N to connect there must be a you. I think that's why I, I, I say, uh, I end up teaching as a career because I, I embrace it. And the way I do it is, since I'm going to do it, I might just as well do, uh, enjoy doing it, okay? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flip, I'm going to remove the expertise and put the, what we call enjoyable in developing teaching. Okay, but still, the expertise and the experience are still there. And usually, I always have the so-called ace of chem. So what does it mean? I always have my own material. Although the example that I will give to you today is not only on chem, because I know not all of you are chemists, but it's just happened that my field is chemistry. So when I say ace of chem, they really literally start with ACE. And as I told Jeff, maybe this webinar that we have is an introduction. We can have follow-up webinars discussing any of these things. Okay, analogy, archive history, concept map, cinema, cartoons, and my special uh, favorite thing, the everyday materials or events. I tried to just what we call the, introduce some of them. So maybe analogy, it's a common one. Okay, we do analogy, you compare something abstract to something more concrete, which learners can relate to in their everyday experience. Analogy is just comparison between two things that are typically for the purpose of clarification and ex explanation. Effective analogies can clarify thinking, help students overcome misconception and give ways to visualize abstract concepts. However, there's a limit for that. Misleading or confusing analogies can be more than just a waste of time. They can interfere with students' learning, okay? Now, analogies has been used since early times. I don't know if you know Johannes Kepler that I learned from my high school first year. He discovered the laws of planetary motions. I know there's three laws, and the first law has something to do with what we call the planetary orbits. He said, here, I am much occupied with the investigation of the physical causes. My aim is, is uh, in this is to show that the celestial machine is to be likened not to a divine organism, but rather to a clockwork. So remember, this is the planet orbiting the sun. So it's just really like a clock. So since, that, uh, since before, they use analogy already. 
But they said when you build analogy in one of the article that I read, you have to remember four. Focus, action, reflection. If you look at the focus, you look at the concept. Is it difficult, unfamiliar, or abstract for the students? What ideas do the students already have about the concept? For the analog, is it something your students are familiar with? And then what's the action that you're going to take in? You look at the likes, you discuss the features of the analog and the science concept, you draw similarities between them. The unlikes, you discuss where analog is unlike the science concept. And once you did that, you reflect, what's the conclusion? Was the analogy clear and useful or confusing? If it's not, you can do an improvements. Refocus us above in light of the uh, outcome. So the example that I'm going to put here is analogy is the one that is applicable at this time. Analogy in times of COVID-19, the flattening of the curve. We can stop social distancing. If we do that, it's just like the parachute has slowly, I uh, slowed my fall and I can take it off now. The result is there's still more infections or death. Another analogy that I can use in these times of COVID-19 is the use of masks through the urine test. I know this is not new to you. Okay? So in the urine test, you, uh, the concept that you have there is uh, what we call the virus. And the analog that you have there is the urine. So what, what, what happened then? Okay? If you don't wear masks, what will happen? to the virus. If you don't wear pants, what will happen? The urine. So if we all run around naked and someone press uh, pee on you, you get wet right away. If you're wearing pants, some pee will get through, but not as much so are much better protected. And if the guy who pees also is wearing pants, the pee stays with him and you do not get wet. Okay? Wearing of mask is still a political issue right now here in the US. And not but not the least, I was uh, what we call reading this. A chemist said that the six feet social distancing is not going to work. Why? Because at 25 feet, at 25 feet, you can still smell the cigarette smoke or the weed smoke. So what does it mean? If you can smell at 25 feet, okay. Those stop, most likely the virus can also transfer at that length. Okay? So what are the known analogies? So maybe if we want biology with physics, you put eyes like a camera. Okay? Or if you want, uh, let's say, uh, bio with engineering, we say blood in vessel, just like water in pipe. But if you're going to look through it, vessel is a little bit elastic, pipe is what? Rigid. And then we have the lock and key model for the enzyme. Okay? And then we also have this famous analogy. So it's like a factory. Okay? There's a press here, but we, I don't have time. So maybe one future one, we can look at that what we call presentation. In math, we can have at least four types of analogy. Purpose relationship, a ruler is a line, a compass is a circle. The part and whole relationship, ray to the line, part to a circle. Part and part relationship, vertex you have side, center you have radius. And then the cost and the effect, five. So this is what? Five squared. 25, and this is 25 squared. Okay? And you can also have this one in physics wherein you liken the water circuit with electric circuit. Okay, so if you have the water circuit, you have pipes, in electric circuit, you have wires. You have the pump, you have a battery in the electric circuit, you have a pressure, okay? In the water circuit, you have a voltage. And then you have a narrowing there, and then the resistance that you have there. And then if you're going to what we call draw them, you end up with like this. Now, of course, I'm going to put one slide in chemistry, 
the all lessons that I always have, although this is one of the things that we have. So in my class today, the start of summer session, we start with the solid, liquid, and gases. And I told them, in this pandemic, you're everywhere around the US, we are in the gas form. If ever we meet in campus, we are in the liquid form. If ever we see face-to-face -face in the classroom, we are in the solid form, okay? Now, another thing that I use is archive history. If I didn't end up as a chemistry major in UPLB, my other application is a hist AB history in UP Diliman, okay? But I passed in UPLB, but not in Diliman. So we all know the Greek formulated or suggests that all materials is just made up of these four elements, fire, air, water, and earth. And when I was young, there's a movie that shows this. The power is yours. Now, this week, my two children finished a marathon of this, what we call glass earth and the, the four elements that they have there. Another thing that I try to, what we call, uh, look it's in terms of the history. So 400 years ago, Magellan discovered the Philippines. Why did he come here in the first place? It has something to do with the spices. How... Uh, what we call the spices are a uh, good or a priceless commodity in the European kingdoms during that time. So this is James Cook, okay? And the most important thing that I usually use in my chemistry course is Napoleon. Not the wine, but the person. I always ask them, what happened to Napoleon when he messed up with Russia, okay? And I always try to explain them, do you know chemistry is the reason why he ended up a disastrous uh, campaign in Russia? And I put the joke here, even our president right now, what is his trouble? Russia, 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 okay? Hitler got into trouble when he messed up with Russia. So in short, you don't deal with brother, uh, no, not brother, comrade Putin or comrade Vladimir. So this is one way to entice them. Now, I also use concept maps, okay? So this is just a visual organization and representation of knowledge. So what you're going to do is it shows the concept and uh, ideas and the relationship among them. So you put them in a box and then you connect it in the line showing that the two, uh, what we call keywords has a relationship with one another. So today, I introduced them in the solids, uh, liquids, and gas, and I told them that we're going to expand this knowledge as we go on, okay? Now, the favorite part that I have is what they call the entertainment, when I use movie clips, okay? And I'm going to show to you here, clips, it's not even in what we call chemistry. I was able to what we call publish a book chapter about it. I was planning to what we call publish a book, but the pandemic uh, came in and I have to do the online training. So I don't have time to do that. So maybe when everything is uh, come back to normal, I try to go back again. Okay. So if we're going to look at this one. So I'm just going to show you a clip here. So. How far is that rig from the terminal? And how fast is it traveling? It's uh, 106 miles from the terminal going 70 miles an hour. We've got 78 minutes. Do you have another rig? There's one. What is wrong with the clip? So if you're going to what we could show you clip by clip. So he mentioned this one, 106 miles from the terminal going 70 miles an hour. How long is that? Okay, you try to do the calculation, but I can tell you it's not that how long. It's longer than that time. I I'm not sure, maybe 90 minutes. Okay, yeah, that's what we call goofs in movies. And then I have another one from a classic movie. Yeah. 
Ph.D. <laughs> Ph.D.? Yeah, that's Doctor of Thinkology. The sum of the square roots of any two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. If, if you watch the clip, this is the entry that you should look into details. The sum of the square roots of two sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square root of the remaining side. Except the right triangle. Isn't it this triangle? Okay. So this is one way to catch their attention, especially in my night class. That's why I was able to publish that paper. I'm so happy because after I published that paper, they removed the night class and make it into a day class again. Okay. I also use cartons. I don't know if you know it, okay? But there is this what we call book, The Physics of Superheroes. There's a PDF copy available in the online. What does it tell us? Okay, so you look at the real and the fake side of the comic book universe. You're a DC person or a Marvel person, okay? So if you're going to look at them, some of the physics in the comic books we could say is correct. Some of them is just plain wrong. Some are not as easy to answer as it may uh, depend on the still developing theories. But this book provides an engaging and witty commentary while introducing the lay reader to both the classical and cutting edge concepts in physics, such as this. Superman strength can tell us about the Newtonian physics of force, mass, and acceleration. And then the villain Electro and Magneto. Okay. I also use this one, the so-called Krebs cycle. One of the most important reaction sequence in biochem. I don't teach biochem. It's the main course, of, uh, it's the main source of what? Energy for cells and an important, uh, we could say part of the aerobic respiration. I try to describe the two bonds by showing this one, or when I go to my analytical, I try to explain this one. Potential, okay, current and resistance. And then the, my, what we call favorite everyday materials. Chemistry is like cooking, just don't lick the spoon. I always use the one stew, or what we call, is that the, the sinigang yung sabaw na kumukulo? I use that in boiling point elevation. I tell, I ask them, so if you cook, it starts to boil. When you add salt, what happened? It stops boiling. And then what happens? Starts boiling again. Okay. I also use the French fries to discuss what we call intermolecular forces of attraction. Telling them that even oil it's just made up of what? London dispersion forces still has a higher boiling point than water, that is a hydrogen bond. The boiling of egg. Why do I teach the boiling of egg? Usually when you heat something, it becomes soft, but for egg, it becomes hard, right? And then when I was there two years ago, supposed to go back this year, but I don't know when I'm going to go back there in the Philippines. So uh, I held a seminar in uh, Bicol University. I had a seminar in some schools when I was there. At Bicol University, I have a black mate there, Sam Boviles. And then in Sambuanga, I went back to my uh, high school. I have a black mate also there. So usually I ask my black mate, I want to go there. Can I do something for them? So there's participants. So what we did for the whole day, morning is on lecture, afternoon is more seminar. We use everyday material one that is identified to Filipinos, coke. Why coke? Because chemistry, okay, experiments. What did I do? And I'm doing it right now this summer because I can, we cannot have face-to-face -face things. So I asked them, do you have soda at home? Do you have this material? So I put some uh, several stations and I just use coke. First station is the soaking of the egg in the cola. It didn't work well because we just have a few days. But if you're going to do that after several days, this is how it looks like. I think this is after one year of soaking egg in the cola. Okay. We also have the sugar station. I asked them to heat it. And by the end, I asked them to compare Coke Zero and the regular Coke. 
And what does this stand for? The sugar. Okay? Like my daughter, sugar. <laughs> okay? And then I have the mixing station. I ask them to mix milk with coke. And what happened after some time? The mixture becomes like this. It denatures the milk. Okay? If I put it to the different, what we call milk, this is the results that we have. I also ask them to put some soda and then add it with bleach. You don't drink bleach. That's why we have whatever mixture that formed there, don't drink it. Okay, and what happened after some time, the color disappear. And I think this one, not bad, most of you will do this, the floating station. Have you tried doing this? I would say try and you will see. You can include Coke syrup because I always says, what's the problem with Coke? It produced diabetes. So they introduced diet Coke. But what's the problem with diet Coke? You just die with tea, okay? Because they found out diet Coke can still cause diabetes. So if you drink diet Coke, you die with a tea as in diet, okay? And then the everyday materials, there is what we call a website that's known as compound interest. It's really very useful, okay? There has a portion there that says communicate and they always have the chemistry of everyday materials like this one, the chemistry of decaf coffee, okay? You can also find some information like this one, the plant pH indicator. The only thing that is uh, what we call confusing here, we know if it's uh, red, it's acidic, if it's blue, it's basic, but the hydrangea flowers, it's the other way around. It's uh, pink in the basic soil and blue in the acidic soil. Something to do with the anthocyanins that you have there. And then this one, the mud in the lottery. I think millions of people like it. And I saw some of my students doing research with me who like it. So that's why I put this in this lecture. I don't know how. I don't know, but the answer is not that, right? Okay, and this one, carbon-free sugar, it says there, but we know sugar is what? C6H12O6. And this one, Jeff Glor, CBS News, carbon monoxide. This is 2015, there's an incident in Baltimore, and this is in national news, okay? And then, this thing, you can find it in Facebook. And the last thing that I have here is what we call the events, okay? The plate gate here is really a big issue. It's one way for me to introduce the ideal gas equation because I hate the New England Patriots, okay? And then the events that you have there last year, the natural versus synthetic suka issue. And then the lambanog poisoning, where ethanol is replaced by methyl. It's not only there, it's also happened in the Caribbean. Okay? And then the food poisoning that we have in the cassava, the presence of this, what we call cyanide. So the, the, these are what we call focal points that you can use to, to make your teaching a little bit connected to the real world. Okay, and usually we could say uh, wishful thinking that I have is this from Greek uh, writer Nikos Katsantakis. Ideal teachers are those who use themselves as bridge over which they invite their students to cross, then having facilitated their crossing, joyfully collapse, encouraging them to create bridges of their own. And I think I'm thankful to all the mentors that I have. Mentors who are willing to accept that their students can be much better than them. Okay? Because that's also my, we could say, thinking. I want my students to be much better than me. Where did I learn that? Greek, Greek philosophy, SPA, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. The student is much better than the teacher. And it has to be that way for us to progress. And I'm thankful for those teachers of mine who are like that. Because some teachers, 
they just want themselves to be the best. And they're the only one that's the best. Okay? And to put the proof, the, the, to, to put it like the proof is in the pudding, I'm very thankful with these collections of students who works with me from different institutions. So officially it's 87, but there are more. And I'm really thankful for the one where I started. I have two in Cavite State and then in the University of the Philippines. Because there are ordinary, we could say, students who went to me. I don't have a PhD during that time. The, uh, the, the faculty who have a PhD cannot accept them. Because they're not really, they're just what we call ordinary UP students to tell you ordinary UP students. Okay? Why I'm thankful? Because one of them end up with this one. He had what we call the chance to shake hand with President Barack Obama in 2013. And I tried to keep in contact with them because I, I, I tell you, my success is only the success of my students. I'm only successful if my students are also successful. And I think aside from them, aside from the faculty, I think I, I, I get to what I, I have right now because of this one, okay? Uh, if you're going to look at that, that's just fam the family that I have. So this was how I am way back 2004 when I get the CAS Outstanding Junior Award. So that baby is this person now. Uh, his Instagram is this one. He had what, 20K followers. He's much more popular than me. Okay. So I'm mm -hmm. thankful for, for my wife. She's always supportive right now. The way that we think it's, ako naman ang magiging bituin walang ni because he tried, she tried. She, she what we call sacrifice her career when I start studying here. And then when, when I start teaching here, she finished her MS and now is teaching in NYC, okay? And also I would like to thank the organizer. So we, I also have a photo with uh, Dr. Pung Kuin. So this was in Times Square and I don't know if we're going to have a Times Square like this after the pandemic. So there were still, I would say, PhD students right uh, during that time. So that's Dr. Cardenas, who's now in SUNY Predonia, so the Dr. Bunkuin. And there's still another person there. The one holding the picture, uh, the, the camera is Dr. Uh, Daang Aguila. So usually what I do, if somebody, usually from ICE or a friend of mine come here in New York City, I tell them, okay, I can, you, you can visit the house or sometimes you can stay at home because it's just the best way uh, to help you. Uh, uh, what we call here, at least, I think I'm blessed with what I have. So next thing we could do, I could do is just share what I have to other people because I, I would say my PhD will only be useful if uh, society will, uh, what we call, gain from it. So I would like to thank you for the time to attend this talk. And the field side hype, so just like Marty said earlier, I also have this project community. So what I do, I, we, I usually uh, organize some talk, but I don't have the times ever since this uh, little girl came out because I'm the one that is really in charge at home, okay? But I'm willing to hold stuff in your own, we could say, place. Just give me, uh, let's say, time well ahead because aside from pace i'm also teaching in another what we call university and every teacher how do you do that how do i do that because i enjoy we could say teaching okay so this is the contact info that i have thank you very much i hope you learned something and i hope this is not the last time that we're going to have this event okay maraming salamat po Okay, uh, thank you po Sir Elmer. Uh, marami, po, ka, marami pong nagsasabi na nagre-reflect sila ngayon about their teaching because of your talk. Uh, also, meron po akong nakita dito sa, siguro po sa layo ng reach nitong aming page, nakita ko po may nag-comment kanina na co-faculty daw po siya ni Ma'am Maricel sa <laughs> dati niya pinagtuturuan dito sa Pilipinas. So, yeah, my wife is uh, in Los Banos National High School. Apo. So, kung sin nakalimutan ko po yung name, I, I forgot to catch her name. So, Amin. shout out po. 
<laughs> Ayan. So, I'll throw in the first question. I have uh, one question here from YouTube, sir. Uh, any tips daw po to engage students in a large class setting? Well, I'm teaching uh, 48 to 72 students. I, I would say the first 10 minutes is the most important one. If you're not going to catch their attention during that time, wala na. So I try to, I have this video every meeting, this entertainment. So what happened is every meeting, they said, oh, what's the next, what's the next clip? What's the next clip that she's going, is going to show? So I try to make that like an attention grabbing uh, opportunity. Because the, the uh, studies have shown, if you lost the 10 minutes, you lost the whole class. So I try to put activities. For me, I just show them a video. And usually that video is related to, to what we call the, the, the lessons that we are talking about. Because I was able to write a paper where in, in Gen Chem 1, I have for every chapter a clips that I can play, including the Game of Thrones thing. Okay? So if they see that, oh, this is related. Okay? So every meeting, there's always what we call oh, what, what will be what will be showing our next meeting. So everyone are interested to, to uh, looking forward to your what we call lecture. Okay, I, I think that's that's the thing. You have to catch the first ten minutes of their attention, or else wala. Okay, ah, ang maganda nga mas mabait pa ang mga Filipino student kaysa sa mga ano dito eh. <laughs> I always have problems in some, especially if I'm, I'm teaching in community college. Oh no. Pumuti ang buhok ko noon. Ngayon, okay na. Nakapag-adjust na. <laughs> okay. Uh, sir, meron pa pong ibang questions. Uh, tinatanong po nila kung meron daw po ba kayong compilation ng mga videos or clips na pwedeng ishow sa Kunwari nga po sa isang large class setting para po... I have um, my own collection. Ang problema kasi nung pinos ko sa YouTube na ano eh, na plug. <laughs> so <laughs> I, there's a, a web page I think, Entertainment uh, at YouTube. So when I posted it <laughs> after a week, you cannot play this video kasi na plug nga yung ano eh. So I have my own collection. If I'm going to show you May mga DVDs ako dito, yung collection Blu-ray. And the, the idea that I have is to write a book. Uh, ang problema nga itong pandemic, so we have to undergo training on online because we're not really what we call uh, trained to do this remote learning. All right. So, baka po, sir, pwede, ka, pwede nila kayong i-email. Ano po, na present po kanina tayong contact po. Yeah, it, oh, teka. Nakikita ba? Uh, hindi, uh, 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 madali lang, ka, ano, tandaan, Emoji California <laughs> at pace.edu Emoji ka. Okay po. E, tapos yung pong apelido ni Mohika, sir Mohika yeah. at uh, PACE, PACE.EDU. PACE.EDU. Yeah. Okay. Dito ang tawag e ko lang sa kanila, Emoji, California, because California is CA. <laughs> so, Emoji. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. So, ito pa po may isa pong interesting na question. With the current situation, most teachers will be shifting to online teaching method. Can you suggest some ways to teach science effectively and efficiently in a virtual uh, classroom? You know... Pro Ito yung opinion ko, ha? online is really stressful. It takes a lot of toll on me. And I'm happy that it's done, pero nagsisimula na naman ako. My experience this morning, I, I used the Zoom, and I greet them, welcome, summer session one. And then I said, what the hell are you? All of them, their videos all. So it's really challenging. And there is a study that says, 75% of students don't want online. They prefer to stop studying than go on remote learning. And I think in the Philippines, my main problem we could say is the infrastructure. Do we have the internet? Kaya ba ng bawat students magkaroon ng internet line bukod doon sa what we call devices? 
Here in New York City, you know what they did? They gave, they loaned the students this iPod, each NYC student. I know that because my wife is a teacher here. And these are what? Three kindergarten. They were given, they, they were loaned with what we call this uh, iPad. And if they have, don't have internet, the city find ways to do that. That's my uh, worry in the Philippines. Do we have that infrastructure? Because when I was there, my, my son cursed me and told me, I'm not going to go back there because there's no more internet line. <laughs> Okay, so main problem po talaga is the access to internet kasi yeah. yun po talaga ang pinakamahirap. But pag merong ng access sa internet, marami na po tayong makukuha yeah, resources. I, I think there's a lot of what we call resources. Kahit ako ngayon, nag, nag, uh, because I'm not trained to do this one. So I'm still on the OJT. Uh, this summer, this is the first time that it's 100% online. Because you, you ano, sabi ko nga, my, our worried is I don't think the student will embrace that idea. Okay? And I'm so happy when I got the evaluation, I read it finally this morning, that they, 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 they see what uh, happened to us after what we call the pandemic thing and how hard it is for them to adjust. And at the same time, they at least uh, thank me that I did my best to at least make the uh, teaching engagement still, uh, we could say, useful to them. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, ito po kasi yung bagong lumalabas ngayon sa Philippines, no? yung tinatawag na blended learning. Uh, may nagtanong po from Zoom kung ano daw po yung magagawa nila para magkaroon pa rin ng labora laboratory activities in a blended <laughs> learning system. Uh... Yeah, that's my problem kasi iba yung experience of hands-on kaysa sa ano eh, yung showing them the video. I'm teaching instrumental analysis. So mahirap sa, oh, ganito gumamit ng GC, ganito gumamit ng HPLC. So sabi ko na lang sila, when everything comes back to normal, you come to my office and we'll work on the lab and I'll show you, I'll teach you how to run the stuff. So the way that I'm going to tell you, uh, Maybe yung everyday materials na maano, pero it's still limited. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have what we call the right answer because as of now, naghahanap pa rin kami eh. Eh ang problema, yung mga ino-offer sa amin ng mga private company, wala rin naman makukuha ang hands-on yung mga studyante. Yung parang gagamitin lang nila yung mouse tapos Papa na mag-titrate. Eh, hindi naman ganun yung training na kailangan. <laughs> it's still different if you get it hands-on. The, the way I took it is that's why my, my worry right now is everyone who's been my students know that the best way I teach them is when I do the stuff face-to-face -face with them, especially doon sa lab. Kasi in charge ako sa titration. Eh. Sabi ko, hindi kayo makakaalabas kapag hindi nyo alam kung paano mag-titrate. <laughs> okay. Uh, sir, ito, medyo interesting na question. When did you realize that you should be an effective teacher? When kasi I did you in the U.S. At the first, siguro po, pare-paras po tayo kasi may teaching experience. Sa uh, pangauna, parang it's just a way of parang job. No, I mean, in UP, alam mo, magagaling yung mga studyante, di ba? So pwede kang maging, alam mo na, <laughs> <laughs> a pain in the ass to them. I, I don't know how my students look at me during that time, but I can tell you, kung ano man yung experience nila during that time, I think that's not how I am right now. Because during that time, all I want to know is I'm a step ahead of them. Okay? Mahirap pumalpak kasi lahat sila magagaling. Here, um, may magagaling. Pero kaya nga nahirapan siguro ako sa online kasi pagpasok ko, minsan hindi na ako nag-aaral. So what's our class today? <laughs> Pero sa online, you have to prepare. Okay? And I have to give them supplemental lectures so that they will see that kung hindi man namin ma magamit yung time, there are still things that they need to do to get on that time. 
Okay, thank you sir. Uh, siguro sir, uh, dalawang questions na lang uh, before tayo uh, mag- magtapos. So meron pong isang question dito sir na, Sir, I have a question. The K- uh, K-12 curriculum makes all science teachers do teach all. Meaning, we get to teach all branches of sciences regardless of our major. As a bio major trying to teach physics and earth science concepts, what would be the best way to deliver it or at least learn it first? Uh, this is my opinion, okay? You cannot be a jack of all trades. Siguro, hindi ba pwedeng gawin yung specialty pag time na ng chemistry yung chemist ang magtuturo pag time na ng physics yung physicist ang magtuturo i don't think you can have a good product kapag isang teacher magtuturo lahat ng science courses uh based on experience just to let you know i'm a public school product okay I came from a barrio uh, elementary school and then Wimsu High and then UPLV. And you know, you know, why do they have the K-12? When some of us, most of us here, are products of a system that's not K-12 and we turn out to be good. Because when I realized the K-12 thing, nung nalaman ko dyan, pero meron yata ang ano, uh, alternative na yung specialty students kapag special yung ano na nila specialization na nila sila yung nagtuturo okay because that's my first reaction oh isang teacher magtuturo ng lahat parang hirap yata ano because i know in the first year we have the general science in the second year the biology third year chemistry and the fourth year is the physics but right now i think in one year you're going to get all of them so parang ano ba tawag lutong makaw at ang magiging product niya and you in the college will have a problem. That's the reaction that I get when I was there. They are what we call not sure how the new college students are prepared for the science courses. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you for that opinion, sir. Uh, I, I, would ju- I would just like to ask Kuya Jeff if you have some clarifications or may nakita kang mga questions from YouTube na namiss ko. Um, I think like we've actually covered uh, most of the most critical ones, so I think that that's, that's actually quite good. Um, maraming maraming salamat po. What we're also trying to do is that Kuya Meng, um, we will try to compile yung questions po. Um, if there are some, if there's a need for follow-ups, then perhaps we can adjust them in a uh, in a follow-up session para po, um, para po ano, mama, may may continuity po ba yung ano yung mentorship yep. yung sharing? Sure. Okay. Apo. Okay, so with that, uh, thank you po Sir Elmer. And again, para po dun sa mga nanghihingi ng email ni Sir, or, or meron po kasing Sir na mga nagtatanong uh, about best practices, etc. And I think it would be better if they will communicate to you directly and also for the materials that you are using. Kaya hindi ko na po tinanong dito. So na-post na po namin sa Zoom chat yung inyong email. So the teachers can directly contact you if they have uh, questions or problems with our uh, with their learning materials. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So, with that, thank you po, sir. Maraming salamat po for salamat. And before we let you go, again, yung pong Google uh, form to get your certificate, we will be posting it now in the Zoom chat and YouTube uh, comment box. Paki sagutan na lang po to get your certificates and wait for our announcements in our page on how to get your certificates. And to may instruction po kami ibibigay. May instruction po kami ibibigay kung paano po makukuha yung certificate. This time po i- iba na siya. So you guys have to pay attention. Yes. So just to promote our future events, I'll give it to Kuya Jeff. Okay. Um so very quickly po, gusto ko lang pong kayong imbitahin. So next week po, exactly a week from now, meron po tayong webinar uh, about agriculture, about as a, uh, about agriculture as a career track. So opportunities in agriculture and we actually have invited a couple of uh, leading figures and agriculture young leading figures in the agricultural um field in the Philippines. So for example, meron po tayong founder ng isang um startup company on um agri- uh, it's an agricultural consulting company so Dax Alfindo so he's, he's there and then i think we have like an um 
Jim Leandro Cano, who is, who is uh, the Philippines representative to an inter- international um, organization for agriculturists. So, ito po, ay gusto po namin ibigay ito sa inyong mga STEM teachers para po familiar po kayo sa mga opportunities sa agricultural track. Kasi kayo po yung mas nakakausap ng mga estudyante kapag pumipili po sila ng kurso sa kolehiyo. So, ang gusto po talaga namin magawa dito is mabigyan po kayo ng guidance at familiarity sa kung paano po ba talaga yung mga oportunidad sa agriculture. And then, kung pwede po ninyo imbitahan yung mga estudyante ninyo na nagko-consider ng pagpili ng kurso sa kolehiyo, this is gonna be a very good a very good webinar as well. Yun po. And then, after this, <laughs> next slide, please. Um... After this po, meron po tayong uh, follow-up. Meron po akong pangalawang lecture, yung Taglish na chemistry lectures po natin. Uh, we have it scheduled on June 29th. So this time around, I will be talking about Lewis Theory. So doon po sa mga naguguluhan sa pagsusulat ng Lewis Structures, naguguluhan about covalent bonding, about polarity, about formal charges. So dito po natin siya gagawin. Uh, English Tagalog po uli, kaprehas po nung ginawa ko nung nauna. Um, open po ito sa lahat ng estudyante, sa lahat ng teachers, at kahit na sino pa man pong gusto mag-review. Ayun po. Maraming salamat po. Okay. So, thank you so much, uh, Kuya Jeff. And thank you din po, Sir Elmer, for uh, granting this uh, webinar. Ang dami pong natutunan ng mga teachers natin. Tapos, yung po sa mga teachers natin, pahintay na lang po ng konti nung sa Google Form. And, Kasi and po, yeah. nakaka-activate pa lang po no yep. Google Form. So you can uh, access it I think right now or in a few minutes. So hindi yeah. po muna namin isasara tong Zoom meeting para ma-access nyo po yung uh, mga, yung Google Form. Okay. Any parting words po Sir Elmer for the teachers? Uh, what can I say? Uh, I, I say uh, malaki po yung role na piniplay ninyo. I think the way I end up like this, I owe it to the teacher. I never imagined teaching myself. If you're going to ask all my college friends, the first thing that they, uh, what we call, uh, said, are you sure that he's a teacher right now? Ganun na yung reaction nila. Pag pumunta sila, bumabalik sila, like, paano ka naging teacher? Eh, napaka <laughs> sungit mo. <laughs> okay? Uh, your students, uh, we can say, they need guidance. Sa, sa, sa iba sa kanila, uh, they're, they're talented. They just need to be guided well. That's the way I try, uh, I learn. And I, I tell you, I'm still learning because I think the world is always changing. Iba na yung generation. Nung, nung sudyante ako, iba. Tapos naging teacher ako, nung nandiyan pa ako, iba. Tapos ngayon, mas iba. And I'm sorry to say, some of the students are getting worse. But if you, as a teacher, you guide them, I think we can still have some future. I, I, iba na eh, parang ang, ang dinig ko nga eh, medyo hindi na disiplinado ata yung mga bata ngayon dyan. Kasi noon, I remember I have to stand up or kneel in this uh, mong bin kapag nagkamali ka. <laughs> my, my grade four teachers like that. Kapag nagkamali ka, wala, palo. <laughs> but I don't think they do it now because it can be a form of this what we call child abuse, right? And as a teacher, you, I would say, has a role to mold your students. And I will tell you one day, they will be thankful for what you did to them. The, the, the only thing with this teacher is, hindi mo na agad yung result. I'm so lucky that I'm still young, Nakuha ko na doon sa mga naging estudyante ko noon dyan sa IC. And tuwang-tuwa nga ako kasi yung feeling talaga nila, the term that they call themselves, kami po, mga latak po kami sa IC kasi apat, tatlo lang ho yung grade namin, four, five, uh, ano, three, four, five lang ho. Sabi ko, oh, alam ko. Pero kailangan nyo pa rin matapos. So I, I was lucky to because I think having them is we could say, gave me a very good training ground. Okay? I might not have what we call the best students that we that, that I have during that time, but I take advantage of the situation that we have there, and we take advantage of the best uh, time of interaction that we have during that time. Kaya nga sa ngayon, parang hindi ako na, kasi isang entrepreneur na siya, may sarili na siyang company, 
Tao si Misa nandoon sa Micronesia naging teacher of the year. Sabi ko, hindi ko rin na-imagine na ganun din pala kayo katulad ko kasi hindi nila ma-imagine right now whenever they hear me. Oh, nasa New York ka na. So I said, no, I think siguro bro, ganito lang talaga yung plano. Wala na yung magagawa. We just uh, what we call do what is given to us because I owe Dr. Merka, he always says, kung hindi talaga sa iyo ang plano, may mas malaking plano para sa iyo. I think he, she's the most influential teacher that I have. And I think she's one of the teacher that I owe whatever success that I have right now. And she is always telling me that I'm going to be proud if you're going to be much better than me. It's a rare for a teacher to what we call give a, a booster like that na okay lang sa akin na mas maging, maging magaling ka sa akin. Kasi if you follow the tradition, Ako lang ang magaling. Yan lagi ang mga ano nung teacher. So, try to develop the students to grow on themselves. Okay? They will need you for guidance. But don't, we could say, uh, ano man, stunt their growth. Pag nakita niyo yung potential, support them. Because I remember one time when some of my students in the National Invention Contest, kababayan ko pagaling sa Buanga, eh, pinapagalitan niyo yung mga high school student, eh hindi niya alam, marunong ako magtsabakano eh. Hindi na lang ako mimic. But I don't like that. If, if, if those children are my children, write them, I'm going to talk to the teacher. Kasi yung iba kasi, ewan ko kung ganun pa rin eh. Yung, yung ganun yung traditional teacher. Eh. Okay? Maybe for some students that's good, it makes it going to make them, we could say, a grit. Okay? Kasi minsan, Mas, mas marami daw yung challenge, mas maganda yung magiging ano eh. But the way na ano yung mga sudyante ngayon, yung parang konting ano lang, katapusan na ng mundo, they need all the support that they have. Okay? So that's all I think I can say. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you po sir. Parang icing on the cake kapag ka naging successful ang ating mga mentees. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Okay, uh, I understand sir na midnight na diyan pero nagre-request oh, po yung iba participants na uh, uh, so, magkaroon daw po tayo ng konti. Magkaroon daw po tayo ng bukas. Okay. Magkaroon daw po tayo ng konting pictorial. So if wow, if kung i-open natin yung mga camera natin, mga moms and sirs. I could, but, I, could, I also could, could I also just have to say I'm okay. we had a steady um online participation of ano po 1000 so wow and you're mm. only on zoom um 500 seats po yon and then five, um 500 plus sa ano po sa youtube so uh, more than a thousand so that's that that's that's really really good it's one well, of our... please thank you sa yo jeb sa yaman mo <laughs> ay ano ka ba <laughs> it's it's our pleasure po kuya maraming salamat po sa pagtulong po sa ating mga teachers ayun po Huwag kang muna mag-asawa. <laughs> Ayun po. Okay, so magpipiktorial na po tayo. Sinong, ako na lang kukuha, no? Okay. Uh, Kami kasi siya, Marty. Marami. Oh my God, that's, we have 15 pages. So 15 pictures po ito. Pakiki. Oo, oh, marami. Uh, Tsaga-tsaga na lang po. Sige. Okay, so smile po. One, two, three. Another. One, two, three. Tapa po. One, two, three. Ang daming ito. Pose po tayo. One, two. Ayan, okay na po kasi yung iba po ay wala naman pong video so hindi na po sila isasama sa... Okay, so any parting words from Kuya Jeff before po tayo umalis? Before natin i-close to? Nakamute ka, Kuya. Nakamute ka, Jeff. <laughs> Sorry po, ako po pala ay ano, ang dami kong sinasabi, hindi pala ako nakikita. Um, pakihintayin na lang po yung further instructions po natin ano, kung paano po i-download yung um, certificates ninyo. This time, kayo na po yung magda-download. Hindi na po kami yung magsisend. Pakipunta na lang po dun sa page. Um, essentially, kung sino lang po yung naka-answer sa Google Forms, sila lang naman po yung may, may certificate to download. Um, 
please watch out po over the next couple of hours for instructions. So, yun na lang po. Um, sana po, eh, umatan po. Ito po mga susunod namin sessions, napakaganda po nito. Malaking tulong po ito sa inyong lahat. Kasi yung agri- agriculture is, is it's it's an allied science. So, essentially, it it combines all the foundation um, um, courses or fields or areas. So, sana po makakapunta kayo dun kasi makatutulungan po nito kayo para po mag-guide ng students para i-pursue rin yung agriculture kasi napakahalaga po niyan para sa ating bansa. Ayun po, maraming maraming salamat po uli sa inyo sa uulitin po. Uh, see you next week. Okay, thank you, Kuya Jeff. Maraming salamat po. Good night maraming po. Maraming salamat, Sir Ming. Thank you po. Bye. Bye, Bye, Sir. Po. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Sir, thank you. Good night, Sir. Uulitin. <laughs> Okay, sa mga teachers po natin, maraming maraming salamat po and uh, I hope we all see you again sa next naming mga uh, webinars and lectures and wag po kayong magsasawang sumaporta and matuto ng marami dito po sa Filipino Science Hub. And with that, this is me again, Marty, your moderator, signing off. Bye po.